This is the pH sensor. Uh, it's used in quite a few of our books. It's used in the chemistry, the physical science, uh, middle school, biology. So it's used across the uh, curriculum. And it's used to measure the pH of a solution. Uh, to use this, you need to take it out of this storage solution. And this is a pH 4 buffer solution um, that uh, keeps from damaging the sensor. So you want to make sure that you always store it in the solution. It's good to make sure that you have a clean solution in there. And the sensor booklet that comes with this sensor talks about what it is and how you can uh, get more of that and or make your own. So uh, to use this, we need to take it out. So I'm going to unscrew this cap. And as I do this, it loosens this gasket. I'm going to pull it out. And now I'd be ready to, to use it. Now the active part of this sensor is this uh, glass little globe down here. And so that must be in contact with the solution that you're trying to measure the pH. Uh, you need to be careful with this because it's glass and it actually has a protective cage around there. Uh, but sometimes students will, you know, put this down. Maybe you're using this in a stream and they plunge it down in the stream and hit it on a rock and break it. So that's why it has the cage. So you want to be a little bit careful with that. Um, but to, to use it, you're going to take it and just make sure that's immersed in, the, in a solution. So we'll, we'll make some, some measurements here. So first thing I need to do is to plug this into my LabQuest. It's an analog sensor, so it goes into one of the analog ports here. And when I plug it in, I end up uh, getting my meter reading here. And it's close to uh, the, the 4, where I had it in the solution before, so it's reading right there close. Um, and now I'm ready to make a measurement. So I have a solution here, and we'll, we're interested to know what kind of solution that is. So maybe I plunge it down in there, and we look at what happens to our meter value there. So it's climbing, so it must be a base. And uh, so it's stabilized about there, so 11.2 something there. Um, so it's a, obviously a base. Now, to put this away, I need to make sure I clean it. So I have some distilled water here, so I'm just going to kind of rinse that off to, to, to clean that up. And then I will put this back into my storage solution. So I put it back into the storage solution, and then I tighten up on this gasket to, uh, to keep it from leaking out. Um, but we have some common questions about this. People ask about, do I have to calibrate the sensor? And the answer we'd like to say is no. In general, you don't. Uh, you're often interested in the change in the pH value, or you want a, 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 a measurement that you're not, you're not worried about it out to the hundredth place or something like that. So uh, you can use the stored calibration on there. You can calibrate it if you want to. Um, and to do this, you put it into known conditions. So you might put it into a... Uh, pH 4 buffer solution and tell it that's what it is and then move it into say a 10 tell it that's what it is and then you can actually store that to the sensor this is a smart sensor that has built-in storage capacity and so you can tell it that's what it was and then actually save that calibration um, sometimes as these age the values can shift a little bit and so maybe once a year you you do calibrate and, and be able to do that uh, another common question that we get, and it's kind of interesting, is that uh, people will say, you know, what's the pH of distilled water? And they think, oh, it's going to be 7 uh, because that's what the book says. And what happens is they try it out in distilled water and they find that it's not actually 7. Um, and because what's happening is there are not enough ions in solution for the device to even to work in distilled water. Um, and uh, so without the ions, it doesn't work. Or sometimes they put it into a solution and they find that it's actually slightly acidic um, because it turns out that in maybe the distilled water has been sitting around for a while and you have some carbon dioxide dissolved in that, so you have a weak carbonic acid. And uh, so that's what you, what you might uh, discover there. Uh, if you actually wanted to use this in a very soft solution or something without a lot of ions, there's actually uh, something you can add to your solution doesn't change the pH, but it provides some ions uh, to make it work there. So, uh, so again, it's a, a very useful sensor. It's used across the curriculum, and uh, so it's definitely uh, one that you should have. All of our sensors come with a booklet, and this is the P8 sensor booklet. And a lot of the common questions that people will have about this particular sensor would be answered in here. Uh, things about the storage solution, cleaning of the device, how you, know, how you can do that, 
Um, and so it's definitely a good reference. If you have one of these, you might want to refer to it uh, if you have further questions about this particular sensor.